Hi guys. April is Rosacea Awareness Month. And if you have this skin condition, you are in good company because millions suffer from rosacea, myself included. I'll let you in on a little secret. I did not film any videos last week because I was actually getting my treatment for rosacea, which is something I do a few times a year. It's a laser treatment called Pulse Dye Laser, also known as PDL. And it can help with that flushing and redness that you get with rosacea. I particularly get it on my nose and on my cheeks. So it's not a particularly painful procedure, but it's not comfortable either. It's kind of like somebody sitting there snapping a rubber band in your face um, for about, you know, three to five minutes. Here's a photo of me right after walking back to my car. Here's a pic at day one. Whoa, swelling. Here's day two and here's day three. Here I am a week later, most of the swelling has gone down. There's some really slight erythema that mostly can be covered with makeup. Now, usually it takes several weeks to actually notice a difference. It takes a little bit for this to work. Oftentimes, multiple treatments are necessary, spaced at least a month apart, and the results are not permanent. So oftentimes you'll still need to get regular treatments um, every year in order to maintain the results. So these type of lasers and other light treatments like IPL work relatively well for this particular type of rosacea called erythematotelangiectatic rosacea. And that generally means you just have flushing, maybe some enlarged blood vessels, primarily nose, cheeks, maybe chin, upper lip, sometimes forehead. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the different types of rosacea and different treatment options. If you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. I'm a dermatologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. So the exact cause of rosacea is unknown, but is thought to be some component of environmental factors plus genetic factors. There are several triggers that are known to cause flare-ups of rosacea. Those can include sunlight, spicy food, lots of caffeine intake, stress, exercise, hot, cold weather. I know for me, exercise and cold and hot weather are definitely triggers for my rosacea. There are some recent studies that show a correlation between uh, gastrointestinal diseases and rosacea. So, th so those who have common GI problems like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, ulcerative colitis, IBS, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, suggesting that there's some link between skin health and gut health, but I definitely think more research is needed in this arena. Identifying and avoiding the triggers can help reduce flares of your rosacea. So I mentioned that I suffer from erythematotelangiectatic rosacea, which is just a tendency to flush and have enlarged blood vessels. Another type of rosacea is papulopustular type, which tends to have pimples and pustules uh, on the nose and cheeks primarily, and it can even mimic acne vulgaris, the typical acne that you think of. You can have a type of rosacea called ocular rosacea, which involves drying of the eyes, redness, itching, and even forming lots of little styes, little bumps on the lower eyelid. Thymidus rosacea is a form where there's a body part that actually gets big and swollen, especially as you get older and older. The primary form is rhinophyma, where your nose becomes enlarged and the tissue kind of becomes spongy. Granulomatous rosacea is a really severe form of rosacea. There's no cure for rosacea, but there are lots of medications available that can help with symptoms. In addition to the laser and light treatments I mentioned for the flushing, there are several topical medications that can help with flushing, including bromonidine and oxymetazoline. Those are temporary measures. They reduce redness by vasoconstricting the blood vessels. And so they're a good way, like before going to an event, to reduce redness, but they're not gonna be a long-term solution. Other topical medications that can be prescribed are metronidazole, azelaic acid, and ivermectin. Oral antibiotics can be prescribed to reduce inflammation. Oftentimes these are prescribed at low doses for really long periods of time. In addition to medication, you want to be super diligent about sun. Sun is a common trigger and really makes this worse. If you're sensitive to sunscreen, which sometimes can be the case if you have rosacea, then you want to find something really gentle. Oftentimes you'll tolerate a mineral based sunscreen more than chemical based sunscreens, but really just finding one that works for you and being able to use it consistently is going to help quite a bit. And then when you're really out in the sun, you want to wear big, broad rimmed hat. You want to stay out of the direct sunlight with a cover um, and you want to wear protective clothing. 
you want to avoid using harsh irritating ingredients in your skincare um, that being said I do know that oftentimes people really can tolerate a retinoid or a retinol but you just might have to go real real slow to introduce that and you want to wait until after any flare is gone and then start it once your skin is all clear and then really really slowly introduce a retinoid it actually has been shown that it could help um, minimize the flares of the rosacea but if you use it while you're having a flare oftentimes it can just be a little bit too much a little bit too irritating going through it myself I know that it can be really frustrating managing rosacea there are several treatment options available and you want to seek advice from your dermatologist if you liked this video if it was helpful please like it please leave comments please subscribe for more videos like this